all right so from now on we will be doing the topic number one the first topic was electrovalent bonding electrovalent bonding so here are some questions uh, of topic electrovalent bonding so what we will do is we will go through each and every question and try to understand the theory on the spot related to it and thus we can understand how to handle the questions all right so the first question states that uh, which forms are crystals of nacl all right the first one is nacl molecule the second one is ions third one is atoms and d is none of the above so you already know this that electrovalent bonds are formed between the ions right for example if we take the example of NaCl there is one excess amount of electron present in sodium and there are seven electrons in the outermost shell and uh, one electron gets transferred towards it so it becomes Na positive and this becomes Cl negative so because now they are forming the ions therefore there is a due to electrostatic force of attraction they come together because opposite poles obviously attract each other thus giving rise to the electrovalent bond so this crystal of NaCl is formed by the help of electrovalent bond therefore the option B will be correct over here so the second question is the when sodium and chlorine reacts then uh, first is the energy is released and ionic bond is formed all right covalent bond is no covalent bond is never formed in this case absorbed any see there are two ionic cases right you already know that when sodium and chlorine reacts they form ionic bond now the question now is simply about either the energy is getting released or it is getting absorbed see if I talk about bond break as you might have studied in organic chemistry that when we need to break the bond then we provide the energy provide energy for example we heat that particular material such that the bonds will break so you can say that energy is absorbed in the process of bond breakage but if I am forming the bond then the energy will be released so that lands me to the option a all right now let's talk with the third question which one is least ionic in the following compounds well to answer this question we need to go towards the Fazan's rule Fazan's rule it is a rule that tells about the covalent nature so if I'm saying uh, any compound is having the least ionic that means I'm talking about it is having more covalent nature any compound will either have if I will talk about any compound then it is either gonna have a covalent nature or either it is going to have a ionic nature more polarity it is having and uh, more charges it is having in itself then the ionic nature is prevalent otherwise the covalent nature is prevalent over here so over here the option will go to AgCl due to Fazan's rule now don't think that how this is happening see first of all this AgCl is going for the covalent bond fine it is not forming an electrovalent bond so since it is forming a covalent bond you can directly say that it is having a least ionic character in it but let's understand what are the rules for Fazan's so the Fazan rules are of four types the first one is that the cation size so I will call it a small size of cation the second one will be the large size of anion size of anion 
the third point will be large charge and i'm talking these in regards for the um, covalent characters already and the fourth point comes here is the electronic configuration of cation all right so these are the four rules now let's understand what they are saying the first one is saying is that smaller the size of cation is size of cation greater is its polarizing power this means that if any if the size of a cation is very small then it will be having more polarizing power in it that's all it is saying so if any um, if i talk about any compound and if i say that the size of the cation present in it is very small that means it has a good polarizing power hence it will contribute towards the covalent nature it's what it is saying second point is the large size of anion so what it is saying is that in the above case it was a smaller size in case of anion it would be the greater so you, the larger the size larger size of anion will contribute to polarizing power all right now the third topic see uh, from the first and two you can easily identify and compare between the covalent and ionic natures if you see any compounds and you can see that the uh, given atom in that particular compound is either having a smaller cation or having a larger anion then this means that it is having more covalent characters it's all it is saying so if i go back to this question then i will see that ag is having a smaller size in comparison to this chlorine one so in that regards you can say that it is going through the fazan rule and having the greater polarizing power thus contributed towards a more covalent nature and thus lesser the ionic nature it is having now let's continue and uh, see the other points also the first one was the small size of cation the second one was the large size of anion the large charge is like the charge is calculated on either of the two ends it is on either of two ends now what this means is that uh, now for example if the charge on an ion increases if the charge is increasing then the electrostatic attraction of cations electrostatic attraction of the cations for the outer electrons of anions also increases right the cationic attractions towards the electrons of anion will increase now if this thing will happen then there is a strong possibility of formation of covalent bond see in covalent bond what happen is that there is a sharing of electrons right sharing of electron take place now if i am having any cation and it is attracting more towards the electrons of the anion that means it will attract towards it and try to share the electron from the anion thus contributing towards a covalent nature so therefore this is the third point of the fazan's rule and the fourth point is the electronic configuration now what this state is for the two ions of the same size and charge suppose you have the two ions of the same size and charge one with the pseudo noble gas configuration that is 18 electrons in the outermost shell 
will be more polarizing than cation with noble gas polarization. What it simply mean is that if I take two atoms, for example, if I talk about X and Y, and if I say that uh, you take separately X and Y, where the X is the cation and Y is the anion, if I say that, then the noble configuration of X, the pseudo noble configuration, that means it is having outermost shell. 18 electrons. Now this will be more polarizing than the cationing with noble gas. So what it is saying is that Y <coughs> which is anion with noble gas configuration will be having more polarizing nature then X which is a cation with noble gas configuration that's it so you should know all these four points and the important ones are the first and second one which helps you to identify in different questions so this was the Fazan's rule all right so let's get forward now the question number fourth is the electronic configuration of four elements l p q r are given in the brackets this these are the electronic configuration of each l p q r the formula of ionic compounds that can be formed between these elements are that's quite simple right see uh, from this electronic configuration what i can do is uh, calculate the valencies of these respective elements for example i call it l p q and r let me reduce the point yep. l p q r so if i talk about l then i can see that to attain the stable electronic configuration it needs two more electrons in this p area because p can accommodate six electrons so I can give two electrons over here. So if I'm giving two electrons, that means it is minus two. And with P, it is to attain the electronic configuration, stable electronic configuration, I need to take away this one. So this will make it a plus one. For Q, this will be, I need to give one. So it will be minus one. For R, for R, I guess to attain electronic configuration I need to take this up. So this will give me plus 2. So now I have all the valencies. So now I can easily see that what will the formulas. Alright, these are the options. See how do we attempt the, this question? We think we see all options at the first and see that the first option comprises of LP, right? So now at first let's make the formula for LP. Now how the formulas are made, it's like the cation part is coming first and the anionic part is coming at the last. Cationic part is having the positive valency and anionic part is having the negative valency. That much is clear to you all, right? So if I'm talking about L and P over here, the cationic part is P. So the formula will be like P and then L. Now we will write the valency at the top. It's 1 and this is 2. It's minus 2. You, need to, you don't need to consider the sign while giving the formulas, but you can write it over here. So these valencies get crossover, and the formula that we get is P2L. So over here you can see this option is right now uh, since other options are not even right so you do not need to move forward and check at the other this is a simple trick that you can use in examination to save you a ton of time so the option c will be right see uh, only just by <coughs> only just by checking the first part of the question i can easily predict that this is right all right okay so now this technique will save you time Let's go forward. 
the fifth question is the electrovalent compounds melting point are low no nah. boiling point are low no conducts current in few states insoluble polar solvent no so this is the only option that i am seeing that is correct see the few state it might be making you confused the few state doesn't mean it is solidified the few state says the two things that it is either in the molten state or it is in the aqueous solution state see it is saying fused state it is fused to something right you understand like this so the electrovalent compounds they conduct electricity in the either molten state or aqueous state because obviously if i talk about nacl now itself nacl is not the good conductor of electricity in the solid form the crystalline form but if you just dissolve it in water then it converts itself into ions and ions since they have charge they helps in the conduction of electricity so that's finishes the topic 5 question number 5 now let's go to the question number 6 an electrovalent compound is made up of electrically charged molecules this is making me all right the neutral molecule no neutral atom no electrically charged atoms or group of atoms this is the correct one. it's about atoms not we don't talk molecules in electrovalent compounds the molecule is the final product that we get not starting part. the seventh is the uh, the strongest bond is now it's simple it's the ionic bond see you know the answer right well, now let's understand the um, what is the hierarchy what's the order of bond strength over here so the order of bond strength is like uh, ionic bond comes first then comes the covalent bond you know it then comes the coordinate bond all right then comes the metallic bond and at last comes the hydrogen bond this is the way it is being done <coughs> all right now the eighth question is in the following which substance will have the highest boiling point the first is helium ammonia cl3 and then this all right it's simple the answer is b because this is the only compound here that is ionic in nature so having ionic bond covalent bond other one are all the <coughs> covalent bonds this is ionic bond. now comes uh, question number 9th an atom of sodium loses one electron and chlorine atoms accept <coughs> one electron this results in the formation of sodium chloride molecule just molecule you know it it's electrovalent no need to think too much all right the tenth one is the formula of metallic oxide is mo all right the formula of its phosphate these are the options okay so this is metallic oxide so if i am saying it is metallic oxide that means the valency of m must have been 2 right only then this is because the valency of oxygen is minus 2 and since there is no nothing showing here over here that means they both have the equal valencies so that makes us confirm that this metal is having valency plus 2 now the phosphate ion is like this pfo and it is having the valency you can learn it it's minus 3 so if i make the compound m and phosphate uh, metal will be having plus 2 this is minus 3 this cross it you will get metal 3 phosphate 2 and so the option is b Yep. Question number eleventh. From the following, which group of elements easily forms cations? Very right, simple. This see, this is the alkali metals, right? They are having the one electron outermost shell, so it is very easy for them to form the cations. So, yeah. 
or you can also say that they are very having they are having very low ionization energies all right question number 12th which type of compound show high melting and boiling points see the question is high melting as well as boiling point and you know the answer it is electrophilic no need to waste time. The uh, question number 13th is lattice energy of an ionic compound depends upon. Alright. So the lattice energy, you can write it. Lattice energy depends upon charge on ions and the distance more the charge less the distance more will be the lattice energy just like that so the charge only size only packing and charge and size you need to learn this right. now comes 14th in the given bonds which one is most ionic so 14th give it a try let me solve so over here what we see is which cation is more electropositive so over here among all these cesium is the most electropositive so option the answer goes to a now comes to now let's talk about question number 15th you can pause in between and solve it yourself then go through my explanation Element X is strongly electropositive and Y is strongly electronegative. Both elements are univalent. The compounds formed from their combination will be. I think it is simple. It is like the tiny seal one. This question came in ITG. 1980 way back all right so let's see the element x is strongly electropositive and y is negative this is positive this is negative both elements are univalent that means one is single positive and the rest is singly negative the compound from their combination will be simple it will be x positive y negative the first one a There's nothing to be worried about. This is answer. Yeah. Now comes the question number 16th. In the formation of NaCl from Na and Cl, sodium and chlorine both gives electron. Na? Sodium and chlorine both accept no. Sodium loses this is something good. 17th. Which of the following is an electrovalent linkage? Now, let's see what this means. If I talk about CH4, and CH4 is a covalent compound, and silicon tetrachloride is also covalent compound, BF3 is also covalent compound. So, what's left is MgCl. This is an electrovalent compound. So, the compound that is formed with the help of electrovalent bond is showing the electrolyte linkage that's what they are asking that's it the question number 18th is electrovalent compounds do not have high melting and low boiling point high dielectric constant high melting high boiling point high polarity what do not have option a because they have high melting as well as high boiling point and if anyone asks why this is so it is because they are formed by the ionic bond which we have discussed before that it is the strongest bond all right so there will be higher melting point and higher boiling point the question 19 is uh, many ionic crystals dissolve in water because 
water is an amphoteric solvent mm -hmm. it's amphiproctic solvent no it doesn't make sense water is a high boiling liquid the c is the process is accompanied by the positive heat of solution water decreases the interionic attraction in the crystal lattice due to solvation yeah the option is d yeah you need to learn this this is the option none of the above three makes sense that how it will be helping me to dissolve any crystal in water but option d is fine the question 20 is that the electronic structure of four elements a b c d r these are the electronic structures a b c d the tendency to form electrovalent bond is largest in the tendency to form electrovalent bond lies in the fact that how easily it can accept or give the electron so if i talk about a then it is more of a stable type the b yeah it can give electrons but it need to give two electrons in this case it is again stable one and in this case it requires one electron so since the quantity required less is in c so the option will be c it's as simple as that the question 21 is the bonds present in n2o4 are only ionic only covalent covalent and coordinate ionic and coordinate if i talk about n2o4 then nitrogen is having five electrons and the another nitrogen is also having five electrons like this you can say and the oxygen that are connected to it are four so one bond will be found over here the oxygen requires two electron all right so i can say that i can show it like this that nitrogen is having five electrons at outermost shell then it is having another five electrons shell from one and one electrons they will bond with each other and now i'm having four oxygens the oxygen outermost shell it's having six so it requires two electrons to be shared with so it will form a type of covalent bond over here all right and this nitrogen will again form a covalent bond over here with this oxygen now in this case if you see at the current situation this oxygen's octet has been completed you see like this octet is complete octet is complete means outermost electron is having eight electrons similarly with this oxygen the octet is complete and if i talk about this nitrogen then this nitrogen octet is also complete even before getting bonded with this oxygen see nitrogen is currently having five electrons of its own the two electrons are from here so five plus two seven and one electron from here this one so seven plus one eight that same for this nitrogen also so now there is no need for this nitrogen to form a covalent bond with this oxygen therefore what it will do is this oxygen is having six electrons right this nitrogen will donate both of these electron that is the pair of electron towards this oxygen similarly this oxygen will also get both of the electrons from the nitrogen so in this way you can see that in this compound that is n2o4 the covalent bond 
the covalent bonds this is also covalent this is also covalent bonds are present and coordinate bonds are also present therefore the option the option will be c that both covalent and coordinate bonds are present in it all right now let's come to the question number 22 i think you can do this question by yourself i think let me give you a hint this is similar to the other uh, earlier question we did on metallic oxide now this is metallic phosphate you already know the valency of phosphate ion is minus 3 right so the metallic ion this is mpo4 right so if this is minus 3 then this must be having plus 3 so you know now know the valency of metal and the nitrate all you now need to know is what is the valency of nitrate so when you talk about nitrate its uh, valency is 1 minus 1 of course so if i write mno3 then its valency is just, we just calculated it as plus 3 and this is minus 1 we will cross it up we will get m1 no3 whole thrice so m no3 whole thrice is the answer that's the d now comes the question number 23 in transition of zinc atoms to zinc two positive ions there is a decrease in the this is the question all right the number of valence valency electrons atomic weight atomic number equivalent weight see none of it is changing except the number of valency electrons when I'm saying Z into positive ions, that means the two electrons are being taken away from the zinc atom. So the option A is correct. <clears throat> now let's go for 24. The phosphate of metal M has this, and the formula for sulfate would be. See, I think you can do this question by yourself. I hope. Let me give you the answer. The answer will be A. We have done two types of questions, the same type of questions. So I want you to do it by yourself. The answer is A. Do it by yourself. If by chance you don't understand it yet, you can ask me. And I can explain you again. The question 25. The molecular formula of chloride of a metal m is mcl3 the formula of carbonate would be same type of question again so the answer will be b you need to do it by yourself figure out what is the valency of carbonate ion in this case and similarly figure out what's the valency of the sulfate ion in this case then you can get the answer Now comes the question number six, 26. Yeah. Which compound has electrovalent bond? So it is H2O2, CCl4, NaBr, CCl3. The answer is NaBr. These are simple questions, right? 27. When NaCl is dissolved in water, the sodium ion becomes now oxidized reduced hydrolyzed hydrated the answer will be hydrated. this is a term that we use all right when we talk in such a way that nsl is dissolved in the water then what will become of the sodium ion then that is known as that its sodium ion is hydrated that's it all right it is not an oxidized reduced hydrolyzed nothing it's just hydrated you need to learn this yeah 28th the interionic attraction depends on interaction of solute solute solvent solvent charges molecular properties the answer is charges 
attraction is between charges. Twenty-ninth, the favorable conditions for electrovalency are low charge on ions, large cations, small ions. High charge on ions, small cations, large ions, and so on. See the answer is from the Fazan's rule. Fazan's rule. We just studied it. It is having those four parts, in which the first part was for cation. It's what it is saying that cation should have the small size, and the anion should have the large size if this is happening then you can say that the compound that is forming will be having more covalent characters right and the third one was charge so large charge these three things that were the foundations so this was these were the condition for the covalent character now if i will talk about the Favorable conditions for electrovalency. That means electrovalency means electrovalent character. For electrovalent character, these three conditions will be reversed. Now the reverse condition will be that cation should be large, the anion should be small, and the charge should be small. So the option A, just go through it. The low charge on ions, the large cation, and the small anion. That is the reverse of the Fizan's rule. It is thereby the favorable conditions for electrovalency. That's option A. Therefore, Fizan's rule is very important. So I have told you now. This is the second time. Right now, question number thirty. The sulfate of metal has a formula this, and the formula of phosphate will be. Please do it yourself. I want you guys to do it yourself. The answer is D. Yeah. The ionic bonds. Are the question number thirty-one. The ionic bonds are usually formed by combination of elements with. All right. What we are talking about? Ionic bond. High energy potential and low electron affinity. Low energy potential and high electron affinity. High energy potential, high electron affinity. See, in electrovalent case, what happened is that I am having the cation. Say this is a cation, and one this is a anion. What we say here is that cation should have the very low energy potential, low energy potential, or low energy energy you can say. What this really means is that it is providing very less resistance. For the removal of the outermost shell electron, and in case of anion, we call it that its love towards electron, that is electron affinity. Affinity is for attraction, so the attraction towards electron should be more. So, if the anion is having high electron affinity, then this will easily accept this electron that has been just released by the cation. Thus, favoring the ionic bond. Therefore, therefore, I can say that the option B is correct over here. That's a low energy potential and high electron affinity. Question number thirty-two. This was asked in IDG nineteen eighty-one. The molten sodium chloride conducts electricity due to the presence of free electrons, free ions, free molecules. Atoms of sodium. The answer is free ions. You know this. All right. The question number thirty-three. The phosphate of a metal has a formula. This the formula of the chloride will be. Please do it yourself. This formulation now you should be master in it. If not, then please do practice and ask me whatever problems and queries you are having regarding this. Question number thirty-four. Yeah, over here. Question number thirty-four. Uh, A number of ionic groups, example AgCl, Cf two, BsO four, are insoluble in water. This is because ionic compounds do not dissolve in water. That's not true. Water has a high dielectric constant. 
yeah this is fine but this is not the reason for they being insoluble all right water is not a good ionizing solvent not true these molecules have exceptionally high alternative forces in the lattice yeah you need to learn this thing okay some things in the chemistry you can't always explain because you have not covered each and every topic in this current class you are in yeah so some things that are here that you need to understand like this the molecules have very high forces in the lattices uh, we just discussed before the about lattices that the lattice is something it's like a definite structure because all the ionic compounds they form the crystalline structure what exactly crystalline structure means is that they have a definite type of arrangement and structure to it now that definite arrangement is what lattice is all right so that's the whole structure is known as lattice over here now that formation of lattice depends upon the charge and the distance between the two atoms so lesser the distance and greater the charge will contribute towards more amount of lattice energy so having more amounts of lattice energy will reduce the influence of water towards these atoms therefore the water atoms or what we say the water itself even if it's high dielectric constant it won't be able to reduce the interatomic yeah what you can say interionic forces with these in these compounds so because their interionic forces are too strong due to the force of the lattice these molecules remain insoluble in water i hope you understood this therefore i said the answer is d all right the uh, question number 35 is what is the nature of chemical bonding between cs and f it's simple the cs is uh, highly electropositive and uh, the fluorine of course you know it's a highly electronegative so they are going to form the ionic bond and we, we are studying the topic electrons obviously the question is for ionic bond now question number 36 Which of the following compounds of chlorine contains both ionic and covalent bond? Now that's nice. Well, it's easy. See, the answer is B. All right, NaCl of four. Now let's understand how the this ion that you're seeing over here, the NaCl of four, the cation is this part, and this whole thing is the anion. Now this anion is known as perchlorate ion. It's perchlorate ion. That is ClO four with a single negative. All right. And this ClO four, if you look at it carefully, this forms a tetrahedral structure. See, this is a one central atom. chlorine is uh, central atom over here and the four oxygen atoms and they will form a so called a tetrahedral structure a tripod style and you know this i hope you have studied the chapter before only then you are studying these questions so i guess you know this that the tetrahedral structures are formed when the hybridization is sp3 fine so the chlorine and oxygen over here the single chlorine and four oxygens are bonded through covalent bonds so these all bonds over here are covalent bonds but the na positive that is attached this na positive that is attached to this perchlorate ion is with the help of ionic bond therefore the answer was b all right okay now question number 37 Which of the following compounds has electrovalent linkage? Option is obviously B. No need to. This is, I guess, a repeated question, right? 
Yeah, the previous question was NBR, I guess. Yeah. Now let's come to question 38. An INA compound is generally a good electrolyte, weak electrolyte, non electrolyte, and neutral. Electrolyte is any liquid or a semi liquid which is having free ions. All right. The ions are movable and they help in conduction of electricity. And that's what electrolyte is. That's it. That means if I take a water and add an NaCl in it, then at a as a result of it, I will get a water with NaCl ions, free ions, movable ions. Thus, I can say the ionic compounds are generally good electrolyte. They're not weak. They're not neutral. They're not non-electrolyte. They are good electrolyte. So now comes the question number 39th. Which of the following statement is not true for ionic compounds? High metallic points. That's true. Least lattice energy. Now this is something wrong. Least solubility in organic compounds. It's fine. Soluble in water. It's fine. So which is not true. This is not true. They are having good amount of lattice energy. All right. Not least. Now, let's talk about question number 40. The chemical formula for calcium pyrophosphate is Ca2P2O7. The formula for ferric pyrophosphate will be... I think you can do this by yourself. So, the question number 40, I just read it. So, now let's dive into it. Now, since the uh, formula for this calcium pyrophosphate is Ca2P2O7, now this means that the uh, pyrophosphate is minus 4. This, this thing. So, what's happening is that uh, you should be knowing the valency for calcium, right? It's plus 2. So, if the valency for calcium is plus 2 then there are two calcium present over here so there will be overall plus 4 so to balance it out P2O7 to balance it out P2O7 will be having minus 4 valencies now if we talk about ferric it is iron when we say it ferric then its valency is 3 plus 3 and P2O7 its valency is minus 4 if you cross multiply not multiply just cross the valencies then you will get it Fe4 P2O7 whole thrice yeah so the option will be this I think now you are getting clearer with these formula making type questions all right question number 41 among the bonds formed by chlorine atom, all right, of with atoms of hydrogen, chlorine, sodium, and carbon, the strongest bond is formed between. Of course, the bond strongest is formed between the ionic bonds, and the ionic bond is formed between cation and anion, and the most electropositive over here is NaCl. So the Answer is C. It's simple. Question 42. Which of the following is least soluble? Now, now the solubility order is over here will be like um, barium will come first with chlorine. This will be the most soluble, right? Then comes the magnesium one. Then calcium one then it will turn for this guy so since I think you are getting it we are going down the group by the magnesium calcium down the group so the last one is this so the least solubility will be for now let's go for question number 43 which of the following has the highest melting point? The highest melting point will be for the one having more ionic character in it. So over here the most ionic character will be for 
barium chloride it's just go with the fazan rule and you will get it question uh, 44 now this is saying is the high melting point and insolubility in organic solvents of sul phenolic acids are due to its what type of structure so for this let's understand that the sulfanilic acids they have the the sulfanilic acids they have the bipolar structures and due to which their melting point is high and this is very insoluble in organic solvents these are two properties of sulfonic acids so this is due to its bipolar ionic structure now if you are having trouble understanding what is uh, the sulfonic acid then you can understand it like it is a benzene derivative when the benzene is reacted with h2so4 then it gets the so3h over here and then if it is reacted with ammonia then the para position part gets the nh2 and this compound organic compound that is formed with sulfonic acid and this is bipolar in nature all right and polarity you know it that from the positive to negative side it is going so when the, there is the presence of two charges then it is more polar now in the similar way there are the two sides where polarity can be present one side is over here second side is over here so there is a kind of bipolar system present in the sulfonic acid and its uh, ipc name is 4 c it is 1 2 3 4 so four amino benzene sulfonic acid in short it is known as sulfonic acid got it okay now let's jump to question of 45 the 45 says that out of the following which compound will have electrovalent bonding so ammonia water is a simple question question for right the order of stability of metal oxide is okay the it's simple i guess on the depending on the charge and the size of ion you can easily find it out now stability that they are seeing lot of stability i will call it lattes energy see the, the, over here stabler the lattice is more the stability it is having and uh, you can say that uh, the stability is directly depending on the lattice energy all right and that lattice energy in turn depends on charge and size of ions so over here if i say if i draw the what we say stability then it will be for iron will come first or you can say it will be the least stable the most stable will be this magnesium guy iron chromium aluminum and magnesium so the option will be clear. 47 which of the following compound is ionic now it is you know diamond methane hydrogen these are all the covalent structures this is ionic compound now you may ask that why polar nature because obviously because they are formed from ions so they will be having charges so there is polar nature okay question number now 49 so the question 49 is like ionic compounds do not have now let's see what they are not having the option a is hard and brittle nature well they have hard and brittle nature high melting point but they have it direction properties yeah they don't have directional properties and soluble in polar solvent they are soluble. so the option is c yeah their properties are 
many times mostly identical in almost every directions they are not direction directional means that some place it is different and some place it is different to understand it more clearly is like for example if you take a beaker and fill it with water and then you add nacl to it all right now what it is saying is that nacl will be dissolved in this water homogeneously homogeneously means that the it doesn't matter from where either from the bottom part to take the sample or from the top part to take the sample you will get the same quantity of ions of nacl the concentration will be equally distributed so this property comes from the fact that the properties are not restricted to particular directions and therefore it is not direction therefore the directional property is something that is not present in ionic compounds all right they are same throughout they are not heterogeneous if they had been heterogeneous then they must be and coming under the directional properties but right now every property for the ionic compound is completely homogeneous or so as to say non-directional or can you will call i don't know have you ever heard of it or not isotropic yeah, isotropic properties all right now in the question number 50 the highest melting point would be of any guesses of course the compound with the ionic bond that is this one. question 51 what is the effect of more electronegative atom on strength of ionic bond see what is the effect of more electronegative atom on strength of ionic bond let's understand if there is any ionic bond present and uh, if one of the atom is having more electronegativity then what will happen is that uh, with the help of this character of having more electronegative atom this will try to take the electron much more faster this means that the more electronegative atom will be having higher electron affinity since this is having higher electron affinity therefore this will help in strengthening the ionic bond thus the effect on the strength will be that it increases now comes the question number 52 an element x with electronic configuration this would be expected to form the chloride with the formula please do it yourself the, these all formation of formulas you need to do it yourself all right the answer i can tell you is b you need to do it yourself 53 two elements have electronegativity of 1.2 and 3.0 bond form between them would be 53. now let's just understand electronegative difference is between 1.7 to 3 The difference you need to calculate for example there are two atoms like this you need to just subtract these both and if the range is coming between 1.5 to 3 then this lies under the bond of ionic all right anything lesser than that will go for the covalent bond and other things so you for now you need to learn for ionic bond it's 1.7 to 3 so it forms ionic bond. 54 which of the following is least ionic which of the following is least ionic and uh, yeah organic compound over here it is a this is gonna be covalent so this is a least ionic 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी फाइव विच टाइप ऑफ बॉन्ड एग्जिस्ट इन एल आई ओ एंड सी एफ टू रिस्पेक्टिवली इट्स सिंपल इन एल आई ओ इट्स आइनिक एंड सी एफ टू इट्स अगेन आइनिक इट्स आइनिक आइनिक यू कैन डू इट योर सेल्फ now the question 56 is an atom with atomic number 20 is most likely to combine chemically with the atom whose atomic number is what this is this question came in bhu so what you have to do is with this atomic number you need to um, what to say write the electronic con the modern electronic configuration then figure it out by yourself that uh, With whom is it gonna combine very easily? The combination should be such way that that when two of them combine, the octets or the suborbitals are completely filled at least. So I leave this up to you. You need to do it. I will not tell you the answer. I want you to find it yourself and then tell it to me. Okay. The fifty-seventh is again interesting. Bond formed in crystal by anion and cation is, you know, answer. Fifty-eight. The atom or group of atoms which are electrically charged are known as, you know, you know, ions. Which one is strongest bond? Which one is the strongest bond? Why? Because this bromine and fluorine contains maximum electronegative difference as compared to other. See, there is no electronegative difference between the B one fluorine fluorine. Fluorine fluorine, they both are on the same. What do you say group? And the bromine fluorine is like fluorine is still below fluorine. So I will go with A, the most electronegative. All right. So fifty eight. we have completed all the questions that have come till now from the topic of electrovalent bond this part so today we have completed the chapter electrovalent bonding now what i want from you guys is that uh, you go through this lecture and i know i have not taught you this topic in a theoretical way i don't think that is necessary because you have already learned this chapter and i think that uh, learning any chapter from the questions directly will benefit you and will save your time as this is a very crucial time for you guys so i want you all to go through this lecture and don't just look at the solutions directly try to pause the video in between and try to do it yourself the question understand what's it saying and then play to know the answer and its explanation and uh, this series will be of 10 lectures i guess i think in because the topics were 10 if you remember in the i remember it correctly yeah there were these 10 topics after this 10 topic the first topic is completed we have covered all the questions uh, that will be covered in iit mains in not iit advance iit advance questions will be like interlinked questions from topic 1 2 3 these all will be combined together to form one simple not simple but not it's not that complicated but it's little bit trickier and requires more attention than others so we have completed the first topic electrovalent bonding also no ionic bonding tomorrow we will go for the covalent bonding and in that covalent bonding like today there were 59 questions in covalent bonding there will be around 69 questions so be ready so and whatever problems you have you can ask me during the live class and i want you to collect all the questions that you are having and you can directly whatsapp me or send me an email or just give it in the comment section down here that's all for today
thank you very much hope you enjoyed it and see you tomorrow for the covalent bonding lecture thank you